for me, when I first scrolled the For You page, um, you know, I scrolled it and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I can't. Like, this is <laughs> this is not for me. I have children. I cannot see that kind of stuff, you know. And what I would challenge you to do is lean into TikTok culture when creating videos. And there are ways, sp specific tactics you can use to make TikTok trends and TikTok, um, you know, culture-based content relevant to, to the music space. So there's, and this is a gem. So if you guys are listening, get a pen and paper. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a, like a boss. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a boss. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Produce Like a Boss podcast. I am so excited to have today's guest on the podcast. Uh, Robin Marks is a Christian hip hop music producer, rapper, and TikTok coach for musicians. Today, he helps creators all over the world to monetize their businesses, build their brands, and achieve their goals using the TikTok platform. Welcome to the show, Robin. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. Of course, of course. You know, so I got to say, I've been so enjoying the content that you put on TikTok and Instagram, and I've really, really been enjoying your talks on Clubhouse as well. Not only do you bring so much value and you drop so many gems, but you're so clear and concise in the way that you teach. And I feel like I just get it when you speak. So I'm really pumped to have you on the show. I'm, I'm super, super grateful to be here. And also, thank you for those kind words. That really means means a lot to me coming from you because, as you know, I've, I've been following you for a while. So I'm just super pumped, hyped, and I'm hoping that, you know, the audience can get a ton of value today. Absolutely. So can you tell, tell my audience a little bit about you and your journey from being a producer rapper to coaching people on TikTok? Yeah, sure. Um, so for me, I started out as an MC, a rapper in the New York City underground in the early 2000s. Um, I was a part of a collective called End of the Week, which is an international hip hop collective. We have chapters all over the world, you know, France, um, Australia, just different continents all over. And um, I had a kid. And when I had a kid, I kind of scaled back the touring as an artist. And my wife kind of, um, my wife actually brought home an iPad, you know, for Christmas. Uh, this is actually when we were dating. So she brought her iPad home and I started tinkering around with it. And, you know, legend has it that I was making some pretty bad beats. It was like <laughs> some really bad garage band beats, but it was super fun. And I was having, you know, a, a, a little bit of creative release through that. Um, and then as I kept tinkering around with it, I shared it with a few people, including my brother. His name is Yo Vinyl. He's an uh, accomplished DJ. He's DJed for the late, great Sean Price. Ron Fez been on tour with Lupe Fiasco. He's just like a really, you know, credible um, music critic. So I played my stuff for him and he was like, they're actually kind of dope. And right then I was like, green light. Like I got <laughs> something here. Yeah. I invested some money into getting some new equipment. I got a computer, Logic Pro, kind of just stepped my game up a little bit. And then finally, you know, a couple of years after that, I sold my first beat and it's just been, you know, kind of a, a you know, a, a full circle completion on my journey in terms of music creation. And then because so many of my clients had needs, they were like, hey, Robin, what's publishing? Hey, Robin, how do I get my music on Spotify? Hey, Robin, blah, 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 blah. I was like, well, I could keep helping them for free or I could create, you know, a new, um, you know, segment of my business, which was my coaching. And I've been lucky to coach a Grammy award winning uh, drummer. His name is Burning Drums. Super grateful for him. Um, and also a bunch of Christian artists. And really, I always tell people I didn't choose to be a Christian hip hop producer. Christian hip hop chose me. Um, I produced a song for an artist named Dayton, uh, who's a well-known uh, Christian hip hop artist. And he kind of like introduced me to that world. So I'm super grateful for him as a Christian man, but also just as a creator. And I just got a bunch of coaching clients. And then I took my foot off the pedal of coaching because I did an audit on my business in 2020. And I saw my business was really, most of my money was coming from custom beats. So I'd locked in on custom beats. I was going to do that. And then, you know, opportunity knocked and that was TikTok. And ever since then, it's just been like, okay, take your foot off the pedal with beats and just really serve people because the early adopter window on TikTok, we don't know when it's going to close. So this opportunity is a now kind of thing. So I've just totally, um, you know, flipped and leaned into my coaching again. And that's where I am. 
Oh my gosh. I just, I just love that. And that pivots so nicely into the next, the next question, but I just want to rewind for a second and just kind of highlight a couple of things you just said that just went for me. And that was like, you know, you had clients, you were showing up and it's like, you realize that you could serve them on a deeper level. Right. So you were, you were producing, you were providing beats, but then you realize they didn't know about publishing. They didn't know about distribution. You know, they needed help in other ways. And instead of just going out, oh, somebody else can take care of that. You went, how can I just show up more and on a deeper level? And it sounds like that's now transcended into TikTok, Right. So, yeah, yeah, totally. And, you totally. know, and I love what you just said about, you know, this kind of being like, now is the time to jump on this. Right. I think there's some algorithm stuff. So let's talk about TikTok. I think a lot of people, myself included, thought TikTok wasn't going to stick around. Right. Like, you know, like it's like there's so many. Many apps that come and go. And so I think we thought it wasn't important to hop on the trend. And I say we, cause I'm guilty of this too. And we've been putting off getting on the too. platform. We've been Me putting too. off posting regularly, but it looks like TikTok might be taking over the world. What are your thoughts on the longevity and importance of TikTok? Yep. Um, so to agree with you and kind of piggyback off what you said, I am, a, you know, guilty of that as well. So uh, when the pandemic first hit, that's that was the best time to start a TikTok journey. Like literally, there there were millionaires made. I talk about Kabi Lame all the time. Kabi Lame is you know a comedy creator on TikTok, an Italian, a black man from Italy, young guy, started off doing dance videos in his room. Nothing crazy, like some you know regular trending dance videos. He did a couple of videos that hit with him doing comedy. Leaned into comedy today. The guy has more followers on TikTok than TikTok. <laughs> like literally, I believe his number now is like 57 million or 58 million, something like that. It's some crazy number, right? And you could only imagine the amount of money that he makes, not even making money just on TikTok with the creators fund, but actually making money from sponsorship deals and brand deals and things of that nature. So it's been reported that the kid is a millionaire now. So with that being said, yes, to answer your question, I do believe that TikTok is a now type of thing where we need to react to it. It's almost like we think about waves coming and we see the waves coming. We can like jump into the wave, you know, on time and ride that bad boy like a, you know, on a surfboard or we could face it with resistance. And oftentimes, especially me, like I'm a grown up, right? Like I'm, I'm in my 40s. Like I've been around the block. I see a new thing. I'm like, oh, man, these daggone kids again with another thing I got to do. Like, yeah. I got to download. How do you download it? Oh my God. Like, right. So like, that's my first, like, I got the Instagram already. Right. That's enough. Yeah. So that's like our reaction to new stuff is like, it, it's going to be over. Like Facebook is here. Right. So we face it with resistance and then we get slapped by the waves. Either you slap, you get slapped and you kind of make it through. Or if you've been to the beach, I'm sure you have, Chris, you live on the West coast. Like you just go and you get tumbled and you're in the seaweed, right. Eating the seaweed. So I share, I share that kind of metaphor to let people know that once you get knocked over by the wave, you can still get up. There's still time. Yes, the, the best time to, um, to get on the application was March of 2020, in my you know, opinion. However, the second best time is today. Like mm -hmm. if you're listening to my voice, if you can hear the sound of my voice and you are not on TikTok, at least go reserve your handle. That's the least you can do. And then I would recommend just exploring because it might not last forever. History shows that, you know, social media crashes and burns. I'm from the MySpace era. Like I remember when MySpace was the wild west and being like, yo, yeah. oh my God, I can talk to people in the Netherlands. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, going crazy and, and, and made a lot of connections and grew a huge following. And just like that, overnight, it was gone. Vine, rise, fall. You know what I'm saying? So there's a, there's a whole graveyard of social media applications that go through the life cycle. The difference between those platforms and Facebook, specifically Facebook, Instagram, and any other application associated with Facebook is that Facebook is kind of the king of the hill. And because mm -hmm. of that, the, the roots are so deep that they, they pivot. Vine came along, they took Vine out. Snapchat came along, they created stories. And now TikTok came along and they created Reels. And it's going to be a war for a couple of years, but you always want to make sure that you j get there before the, um, the explosion really hits because 
even if it if, if it fades at some point, at least you got to capitalize. And if you're doing your marketing and you know the right way, you're capturing new leads and new emails to build your community. So yes, I say it's going to be around for a while and stop waiting. Let's jump on. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Okay. So something that you said too, that I was like, how, how do you, how are people monetizing TikTok besides the fact that you can do kind of the link in bio thing, right? So, you know, brand awareness is brand awareness. They, they like your videos, they follow you. People are going to click on your links, but you mentioned some sponsorships. What are some ways to make money on TikTok? Yep. So I know your audience for the most part, they're musicians. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm encouraging people in my coaching group, as well as just people in my community online to lean into the idea of you are more than your music, like be more than your music. Like as musicians, Chris, and I'm sure you can relate, like when we're like working on that mix of that song, like we're in that moment, like I'm a, I'm a music creator, that's my jam. But then you have this whole other part of yourself as a teacher, right? Like you've created this other, you know, segment of your being, like you're also an educator. And I think for musicians, especially rappers, because I come from the hip hop community. It's like, nah, B, it's just bars, man. Nothing but bars, rhymes and bars. Like, no, like you're more than that. You can do more than that. So I'm encouraging people like lean into the um, influencer game. Like it's so easy. It's not, it's so easy, whether we know it or not. If we have a, you know, a small following or large following, we're an influencer on, to some extent, you know, whether you're a, a, a nano influencer, micro influencer, mid-tier influencer, right on down the line, based on your community count or your follower count on all of your platforms together, that's the amount of people that you can influence. So that's the easiest way for me, like, and I'm speaking personally, is to leverage um, your community to get some kind of influence or marketing revenue. And there's an app. I wanted to make sure I brought some value today. So there's an app right now um, called Breaker. Um, it, it's it's brand new and it's in beta mode. And it's an easy way for musicians who have a substantial following to generate some additional revenue. I've only been on the app for a couple of months and I've already, you know, um, made some decent money, at least four figures. So I, I'm, I'm on the hilltop. I'm an affiliate for uh, Breaker. So if anyone wants the link, they can go to my Instagram and they can get that. Um, and then there's the creator fund. TikTok, once you get to 10K followers, you have the ability to monetize your content like passively, like you're going to create content anyway. They're going to pay you if the con- when the content gets a certain amount of views. So um, and that's smaller money, but it's still like it doesn't hurt. Right. One guy I interviewed, he said, like, it's almost like I get an extra 300 bucks every year just to like interview just to, um, you know, buy gifts for my kids. Like it doesn't hurt. Um so the and creator then, fund, it's mm-hmm. it's just based on how many views you get. You actually, you're making money on that? Yep. Yep. So based on the amount of views you get for your content, you know, again, I've only been in the creator fund since, you know, I want to say a couple of months, but, you know, I, I, I'm over a hundred bucks that's sitting there in my creator fund, which is, it doesn't hurt. You know, it's not a lot of money, but again, we're creating content anyway. So if you're doing it, why not get a little extra, another revenue stream? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like, you know, it's the same way. Like I, I, I'm not really counting on like the revenue from my YouTube channel by any means, you know? Um, but it's, uh, it's really the brand awareness and the, the reach that you get, you know, and a lot of people will always just skim the surface and go, I'm happy with the free stuff. I just want to stand over here, but it's really what, 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 what kind of sustains us is the super fans, right? The people that go, Ooh, if that was free, what you got, like, what are you selling? Like, you know, like if that was free, the paid stuff must be better. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are some ways that you think um, artists and or producers um, can promote themselves on TikToks? What's, what type of videos should they be making? Yep. Um, so like I said before, be more than your music. I think for me, a critical mistake for me when I first got on the platform was I was a producer and that's all I was. So I was making beats, hitting the pads. You know, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know Jay Black. Jay Black is like, he's like a a super fast finger drummer, right? And he does like tricks and stuff. So I'm there like with two fingers, like looking at the camera, like, yeah, like, you know, like, all right. So I did that for a while, no no real traction. 
Um, I have a mentor. His name is Raz Hendricks. He's like a huge TikTok um, personality. And he's the one who kind of taught me game. And after I talked to him, he was like, yeah, you just got to show more yourself and test and try stuff. So I would say for musicians, it's really important to look at yourself as a human being, like first, like, yes, you are a musician, but I tell people all the time, nine times out of 10, the person who's going to really support your music is not supporting your music because you have the hottest music. Like anybody who's like working hard and serious, somebody thinks they have the hottest music somewhere. So yours can't be the hottest, right? Mm -hmm. What they will attach to is you, the person, you, the human, like who you are, you know, how you represent yourself, your values, that those are the people you want to attract. And those are the people that will turn into like you said, Chris, your super fans. So I would say that's the first step is making sure that you are more than your music. The second thing I would recommend is leaning into, um, TikTok culture. Again, as the old person coming into the party with all the kids, like, oh, these daggone whippersnappers, what they doing? What's, did that girl take her head off? What's a transition? Or like, you know, <laughs> like, what's happening? Like, why did that guy eat that banana? Right? We're always like, oh my God, like, I don't want to go over. That's some, some weird stuff happening over there. Like, I know that for me, when I first scrolled the For You page, um, you know, I scrolled it and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I can't. Like, this is this is not for me. I have children. I cannot see that kind of stuff, you know. And what I would challenge you to do is lean into TikTok culture when creating videos. And there are ways, sp specific tactics you can use to make TikTok trends and TikTok, um, you know, culture-based content relevant to, to the music space. So there's, and this is a gem. So if you guys are listening, get a pen and paper. When you see a trend that appears on your screen multiple times, so people are doing the thing and then there's text popping up, but the text may be different. So the first one might be, uh, let's say food related, a food niche, right? It'll be something related to food. The next one might be cars, but it, they're still doing the same kind of action, same music, but different text you want to save that video or favorite that video, I should say, and, and later on come back to it. And what you do is shoot a very similar video and just change the text. Change the text and make it relevant to your niche, make it relevant to your project, your music, or even if you want to like make that personal connection, um, make it about yourself. You know what I mean? And um, people love that stuff. Another uh, hack that I found is kind of a... Uh, a community engagement uh, hack. So basically, I tell people that the comment section on on uh, TikTok mm -hmm. is almost like its own app. It's yeah. like <laughs> it's like Chris. It's crazy town. Especially if you have something that goes viral or semi-viral, it is like its own thing. They literally have the option to reply to a comment with a video. So it can create this cycle of a conversation that ends up being like a TikTok post, but you're replying to someone's comment. So what I would recommend that for, for the musicians, especially songwriters, singers, performers, right? And this could work for producers as well, but specifically for rappers, singers, vocalists, here we go. What you want to do is create a video that is you singing about getting people involved with your page and ask them, hey, in your lyrics, and you know, this is not what I'm saying, I'm not gonna sing it or rap it, but basically tell them, hey, why don't you comment your name and in my next video, I'm gonna include you in the song. Oh, mm. <laughs> Chris, Chris, you're gonna put me in your song? Oh my God, it's Robin Marks. Like, can you like put my name? I'm from, you know, Philadelphia. Blah, blah, blah. I'm from New York, but whatever. But the point is, is that people on the platform, you know, see that kind of stuff and they eat it up. You know, they're going to be like, oh my God, now she's going to sing a song about me. So then the, the comments come and then you just make the song and then it's a continuous cycle. Now you have content and that if it does well, that could be like the foundation of your content creation. One ninja tip, don't give up too early. What you want to do is make sure you give it 30 days. Don't try something on TikTok and be like, oh, that one didn't work because it's not that kind of thing. The, the people who are rewarded on the platform are consistent and also, um, you know, they, they create content daily, you know, for the most part. You know, some people would argue that, um, you know, you could take a few days off. 
I'm speaking from my personal experience, but also from all of my students that daily consistency really pays off. Um, so those are two ways that musicians could create some content. Yeah, I love that. And it seems like, you know, it, this is kind of a the theme. I mean, and you know, you come from from the beat, you know, making and leasing world too. It's like consistency is where it's at. And I think where a lot of people, you know, they get frustrated and they say, oh, well, this doesn't work is that they like expect, you know, kind of instant results. And, you know, nothing, nothing really great ever works that way. Right. You know, it's mm -hmm. like that that 10 year overnight success, right? It's like, you got to put in the work, but it sounds like, you know, with consistency, even after 30 days, I mean, with TikTok, I've never seen any other platform where you literally can blow up overnight. It's, it's, crazy. Ridic it's, it's crazy. ridiculous. It's scary. It's, it's yeah, just, it, 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 it's so the, powerful. Yes. And, and like you were saying, the engagement feature where they can reply with a video. I mean, it's like, it's like right now I'm looking at Instagram and TikTok and going, you do fight to the death, you know, because yep, it like, is. It's they a really war. just, it's they a keep war. up leveling, you know, but it's like, I don't think I ever thought TikTok would even come close to being able to compare with Instagram. And, and there's, mm -hmm. there are things about it that dominate. And now they're doing ads on TikTok. They are, they are. And oh. they're, they're, they're doing promoted posts as well. That's rolling out to some creators. The, they, they just got a new CEO uh, a little while ago. You know, I want to say a couple months ago. And they, since then, the, the features are rolling out. Like it's next Damn. level. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Well, it's so funny, Robin. You're so, first of all, I just love chatting with you. Like I said, like, I know the audience, my audience is probably feeling the same way. Just the way that you break things down, like the way, like just your communication, like your level of communication is so clear and concise. I'm like, especially the way that like, I love how you promote yourself as like TikTok coach for adults. You know, well, like I'm rebranding. Right? I'm rebranding. Like, oh, okay. Tell me I'm about re that. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm glad you said that. But um, this is, I think this is like not a TikTok specific lesson, but this is good for people, especially people who are trying to turn their music into a business. So for me, I went with TikTok for grownups because it did well for SEO. It was like, uh, what yeah. can I do that would work, but also like cast a wide enough net and be niched enough where I could still like get in front of my target audience. And then I did my uh, group coaching program for a couple of months and realized like all of my students are musicians. <laughs> so yeah. like, so now what I'm doing is saying like, cause you know, grownups also could have a, um, a negative connotation. It's like, some people don't want to grow up. People are like <laughs> grown up. Like I ain't no grown up, you know, what do you mean? Um, but it worked well. And a lot of people did like it, but in terms of me, the lesson is like, it's okay to niche down a little bit. Like the, a, a layer of that is like, yes, I, I, I'm targeting grownups who like have jobs and, or have consistent revenue and income, but also a level down niche down is that they're musicians. And it took, you know how it is when you have to make a dramatic change, you've launched enough companies and had names for different products. So you know how it feels. So I did a survey for my, for my audience and they helped me to decide. So we're gonna really go TikTok for musicians and my new podcast that I'm gonna be launching really soon, that's gonna be the name of it, TikTok for musicians. It targets my audience. Yes. And although we're, we're, we're still gonna be welcoming grownups, we're gonna really hone in and uh, focus in on the musicians. Okay. I love that. And I love that you, how you explained that too, and just brought clarity to that as well. You know, it's, it's, we can't, it's like when you try to serve everybody, you serve nobody. Right. So niching down is so, is so important, you know, and uh, yep. you know, I, I could see how the pivot, you know, I thought that TikTok for adults or grownups was great, but now I see even more so how you picked an even stronger niche. Like, and you're looking, and you also listen to your audience and you said, you know, you've, you're getting into a room, you know, these zoom calls with like, you know, multiple people. And you're like, wait a second, I'm seeing a common thread here. Let me pivot. And I love that. Um, but yeah, I think what I also, what I was getting at too, is just that like the clarity of like how you break things down is so valuable. And I thought maybe it was because I was an adult, but I think it might be because I'm a musician too, <laughs> but it's just like, whenever I see like your stuff, I'm like, I get it. Like that clicks for me. So just like, thank you so much for sharing. And it's so funny. You beat me to all the questions that I had. I'm like, I have these questions here on the side, everybody. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to ask him this. I'm going to ask him to give us his best tips. And he's just like three steps ahead of me, just crushing it. So, okay. So I, my last question was, if you could get some, give some tips on how to improve one's TikTok account, what would they be? I want to ask you one more. What, what do you, and cause you kind of just went over those steps, right? No, I have more. Oh, you got more. Okay. Give me, give me, give me three more steps. I give all my good stuff for yeah, free. I like, tell people. <laughs> you're amazing. I'm like, well, he just gave us so many tips. I don't want to ask him for more. 
best stuff for free. And I tell people like getting into my programs is really just you getting, you know, more, <laughs> getting, <laughs> just, you just, you get the same stuff, but you're going to get it nonstop. And I'm going to like, just pound you with, with value. Um, Boom. One thing that I want to say that I'm talking about, and I actually did a live stream about this last night. And I think this is going to be super evergreen. This is something that as long as TikTok is around and honestly, after TikTok is gone, might still be the case. And I'd like you to chime in on this too, Chris, because I know you're a musician. I'm saying that people need to create music for TikTok, short form music, two, under two minutes, right? So there's a song called Sugar Crash by Ali Otto, which is a minute and 20 seconds long. Mm -hmm. One of the most viral hits on TikTok this year. Oh, I'm on a sugar crash. Oh, no, 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 no. Even if you don't <laughs> know the song, you know the song. Yes. And I think that's the idea of it, that the same thing that I talk about in terms of our uh, presence online with short form content is that it's leaking into music. Like people want to be entertained faster because they have shorter attention spans. And one thing that, um, one ninja trick is, especially for DJs and producers, like remixing a, a popular song and shortening it, especially if you're doing it for not for profit use, you know what I'm saying? Like mixtape style stuff could really get some eyes on you. There's one guy, his name is Ar Eduardo XD. He remixed a Bruno Mars song that originally was three minutes and 30 sec 37 seconds long. He brought it down to one minute and 19 seconds. It's called uh, Talking to the Moon. And it's one of the biggest viral smashes. His remix is on TikTok. So that's another thing for musicians. Try, when you go into your writing process, try thinking about a short song that would include, and this is the, the part you want to write down. This is um, a song that will create virally relevant viral content or text. So your lyrics are like, for example, there's a guy who has a song and you, I'm sure everyone has see, seen this if you're on TikTok. He's like, this is my age. Yeah. This is my son, right? And he's point, and the people point and then your text box, that's my name, Robin. It's my age, not gonna say it because I'm live on the radio, right? Or whatever. <laughs> Think about it like that. And I'm not saying be gimmicky. You don't, you can do it and still be, you know, yourself. Um, so that's one thing that I would say for all artists who are thinking about taking the TikTok journey, just really lean into culture, the TikTok culture, but also start creating music for TikTok and get it trending and get that, get those, that stream money and, you know, get some new fans. Oh, I love that. Have you seen, I'm, I'm sure you have the, I'm so pretty, the Kato track that blew up. Yeah. 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 So I think I hard. Know yep. the, the, um, I'm so pretty and he liked that. And yes. they, and then the girl, it, it starts with a kind of Pharrell intro with a bump, bum 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 with it with a hand slap. And then when the girl pulls the hand off, she's like all dolled up. Did I just say dolled up? I think I just yeah. aged, I think I just dated myself. <laughs> it's cool. We're in good company. We're we're in Chris, here. <laughs> let me add something to that. You see what you did there? You you said, hey. There's this song by blank, blank, blank. And I'm like, mm, I think you could probably, and if anyone's watching this, right? Rewind it and look at my facial expressions. I'm like, I know, but I don't know. Oh my God, I should know this, right? As soon as you did the trend, yep. I know it. The so people thing. are they're <laughs> identifying music by the trends. They're not even like, it's you, you, the musician is almost like a vehicle for the trend right now. So like, that's a great little case study. Like, hey, like I didn't even know until she showed me, you had to show me the trend for me to understand what song you were talking about, which is so powerful. Oh my God, I love that. And and now now that I'm thinking about it, okay, so why not create a, tr a song, right? Let's say you've got a song and it's like two minutes and 45 seconds or 3.30 mm -hmm. or whatever. Do an edit down, make a piece of micro content out of your already existing song. Say, I'm going to do a version for TikTok. You don't have to write us. You could even take a song you've written and just edit it down for TikTok. And then he's like, okay, what am I doing? What am I saying? How could I make this into a thing and do your own, create your own piece of content around it. Lip sync to, you know, do your own thing. So the, I'm so pretty, the girl, um, if, if you guys are not familiar with this, she, she's kind of hitting the phone with her hand and she's, she's kind of not, you know, she's in a sweater, her hair's in a messy bun. She, she's looking pretty, but she's not looking like fly, fly. But then on the last one, when she lifts her hand up, the transition is she is dolled up from like, she is dressed to the nines. Wow. I sound like I'm 80. <laughs> 
she's she's dressed to the nines, ready to pay the down. Dolled up. Yeah, dolled up. But um, and that's the trend, right? And so everybody started doing this. All the women started doing it, you know, where they're coming in their PJs and then boom, they're in a, you know, in their their ball gowns from PJs to ball gowns. So what could you do with your song to create a, a piece of content like that where you're you're using your song to join the culture and, and create a trend? I love yep. that. Oh yep. my God, it's so smart. It's so a smart. Soldier Boy, um, Soldier Boy recently did one um, where he did that exact formula. He created a song, did a new dance for it, right? Um, and it's you've heard this one. This one is like Soldier, Draco. We make it clap, 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 right? So he uh-huh. did this trend. He made this song with the trend. It took off. So for the artists out there who are thinking about maybe remix, remixing a song, the key is, um, you can also create the trend. So you don't need to like, I'm just a musician. Let me just make this musician. What Soldier Boy did was he, he said, I'm going to write the song and I'm also going to create the trend. So it doesn't have to be a dance. And I think that's the common misconception. People are like, well, I'm, I'm too old to be dancing. I'm like, I can't do it. I'm too old, right? It doesn't have to be a dance. It could be one of those pointing the finger on the beat things. It doesn't even need to be the lyrics of the song don't even need to be telling you what to do just follow the beat and and then come up with a question it could be like you know favorite food after tour right and then you point you point and if the trend takes off then the 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 software engineer would be like you know um favorite food after coding for 10 hours and then so on and that's how yeah. it starts so make sure that you don't just look at it like i have to dance to start a trend and then another ninja uh, tip uh i talked about breaker earlier they are kind of creating a way for artists to connect with the influencers direct uh, directly without having to go through that miserable process of trying to reach out to someone cold on Instagram or on TikTok in their DM freezing, right? You're, it's an ice block of messages that never get read. <laughs> yeah. What it does is it, it cre- they created a marketplace where you could find an influencer that has 50 uh, million followers that's going to charge you X amount of dollars to help you um, build that trend out. So there's a way to do it as a formula. Success is not an accident. You know what I'm saying? There's a formula to it. You just have to take the right steps. Oh my God. I love that. I love that. What do you think about the trends of um, like producers or musicians saying like duet me on this, whether it's a cover or a song they created Cato who created the I'm so pretty, pretty track. Mm -hmm. He's, I think the way that that all happened was um, if I, I might be wrong here, but he created a track and he said, duet this. And I think the girl who duetted it that he liked, he was like, Hey, let's actually turn this into a track. And then it became that song. What do you think about um, creating instrumentals and asking artists to duet it? Yep. I I love that. I think that, um, that's a huge part of um, TikTok for musicians culture, like musicians, uh, not just producers, but like, you know, instrumentalists are doing it as well, where they're just putting on the screen, like duet this. So I think that's a huge, huge um, opportunity to not just like create content. It's like low hanging fruit. If you're a vocalist, you can just jump on something that's already um, doing well. Uh, one tip I would say is if you're duetting stuff try to duet things with high uh like counts you know so you could duet something if you're just feeling it and you're in creative mode i think that's cool too but specifically for my students what i teach them is like try to get 500k or above on the likes not the views but the likes and really what you're doing is you're piggybacking off of existing viral content at that point. So it's not just like, I'm just going to do something to be doing it. Let's hope it blows up. No, again, like success is a formula. Like, yeah. so if I'm going to do at something, why not do it, do at something that TikTok already has an audience for. And the way the algorithm works, they place you in front of people who like that kind of content. So you're literally raising your hand and saying, Hey, I think that's my audience. Can I get on that um, train? Sure. Robin, come on in. And then they take you there. So it's not a, a, a perfect, um, you know, so it's not a perfect scenario every time. It's not like that's going to work every time. But if you're going to take a shot, I always tell people, don't shoot from half court. If you're taking your first shot, go right up to the rim. If For all my basketball mm-hmm. people, get right up to the rim and do a layup to start. And a duet off of a viral, an existing viral video is a layup. Oh, I love that. What a great way to break that down. That's incredible. Oh, so many gems. I'm just like, pew, 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 <laughs> pew, pew. And, you know, it just want to circle back around because I think we were kind of talking about this earlier as far as like how important engagement is. Um, it's like 
look at what is how you can maximize the opportunity to use like engagement by showing up in a way of like engaging people and, 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 and being of service and like asking for collaboration. You know, I think a lot of people, we show up on social media and we're like, okay, I'm going to post this thing that says, look at me. Right. And that's it. It doesn't say like, Hey, like come be a part of this. It just says, here's this new song I put out or here's what I'm eating. Right. And it doesn't say, Preach, like, preach. Right? It's like, <laughs> where, where is like, why do, what, of course, no. And they wonder why they're not getting engagement. And it's like, of course a duet works and invite somebody to engage with you and make them a part of it. You know, hey, drop your name in the comments. I'll do a song for you. Yeah, that's going to get more response than here's a new song I just dropped. It's like, you are like, it's like you're inside of my head right now, Chris. This is something that I'm on a hilltop about. If I get another DM in my Instagram from a stranger telling me to go to their YouTube or go to their Spotify, my head is going to like explode. It's so, so irritating because there's an easy way to do it. It's just like, don't start with, hey, can you do? You start with, what can I do? And I think that's the trick that for me, because I'm guilty of this, I'm a rapper by, by trade. Like this is <laughs> like, I toured like rapping for years. I lived in Paris for two years, like doing shows all over France, like rapping, you know, and being an MC and a rapper, that's all we did was like, yo, buy my stuff, listen to my stuff, yo, download my stuff, do, 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 take, <laughs> gimme, 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 right? The minute that I like switched, hit that switch and was like, what can I do for you? How can I serve you? This is a, a quote from a book, uh, I believe by a guy named Donald Miller. It says, yes. put, your, put your customer's story above your own. Oh, put your customer's story above your own, the customer is the hero of the story. Once I did that, I was like, wait a minute, people like me more now. <laughs> people like, <laughs> really like, and it feels better. It feels better. Like offering something is a lot better than selling something. People will line up for the thing that you're selling or promoting if you can just offer them something first. Like that's the cheat code. So Artists, if you're out there trying to promote your single, don't go into people's inbox saying, hey, listen to my single. You could go into people's inbox and say, hey, I love your profile. You know, is there anything you need support with with your brand? I see that you sell T-shirts. I do music. Maybe we can connect. Something like that. Don't even like lead with like, hey, how can you know, how can you serve me? You should lead with how can I serve you? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's, it's funny. Cause it's like, you know, I'm kind of finding right now at this place in my career that some of the most awesome things that are starting to happen mm -hmm. are not overnight things. It's not like, mm -hmm. Oh, this opportunity just fell into my lap and I woke up and now I'm going to be doing this. It's like, these are relationships that I've been building like, and not with any ammo or like, you know, with any agenda that I've just been slowly, like, you know, sets it and just going, you know what, I'm going to let this unfold organically. I'm going to be of service. And now some things are coming back around that I, I can't talk about right now, but I'm just like, wow. And this is such a prime example of just, just, just show up and be in, you know, in an act of how can I give, not how can I get and see what mm. you get back. Mm. That is a t-shirt coming. I love it. Hey, well, Robin, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's just, mm -hmm. it's so great to connect with you. I've been wanting to, to do this for a long time. I'm really, really loving your brand. How can people find you? The best way to get me is not on TikTok. TikTok is a mess. My inbox, so don't, don't <laughs> send me a DM on TikTok and be that person that's like waiting. So the best way to get in contact with me is to email me at robin at robinmarks.com or you can just uh, send me a DM on Instagram. I'm very active on Instagram. Instagram is where I conduct most of my business um, in terms of communication with people. Um, but email or Instagram would be the two best ways. Okay. And how can, be, can people follow you on TikTok? Yeah, please. I encourage you to follow, uh, but please don't send me a DM and hope to get back, you okay. know, a reply because it's just a mess over there. Um, but I would say at Robin Marks on all platforms. And that's Robin with two B's and I will yep. drop all that in the show notes as well. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robin. Yep. Uh, I appreciate you, Chris. Can I just say something really quick? Yeah. I just want to say uh, thank you so much for all of the value that you've given me. And since I discovered you, um, I have been wowed by your consistency, also your brand. And this has been truly one of the highlights of my year doing this podcast with you. So thank you so much.
Oh, thank like you. A, like a, like a boss. Like a, like a boss. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a boss.